to the bird. Yeah, I did understand. <laughs> We're having a great conversation with Sam. What is he? He's a, it's been complicated for you, he's a geosacred cross prairie falcon. In other words, he's a big mix of lots of other types of falcon. Really? Yeah. They were bred in captivity oh. by artificial reception. Oh, it doesn't have it on there. No? No. It's probably, I think it was 2002, so this would be coming up to his fourth season now. Should be a fan. The idea is we get him used to things. If he starts, when he starts getting annoyed, I suddenly put the hood on his head. He'll start to have this thing. He'll get used to this, but too much. It'll be sort of a, in a way, a, a comfort blanket. In a way. You know, it'll be his little safe zone because he can't see anything. Anymore. So you know, as soon as he starts getting scared, he'll start screaming and everything to try and get me to put the hood on. And you find if he doesn't want to do anything, he'll start screaming. He can put the hood on. It's just like spoiling a kid with sweets. You know, you, know, you can't. You just got to give it hard to him. You know, and if he doesn't like something, it's really tough. You know, and he'll get used to it. And when he does get used to it, it's better for him in the long run. So what does he do? Um, birds. Birds. Well, he can go for both, but he would be trained to go for birds. But then again, he doesn't like killing things, so we just do displays. Identify a pigeon at six miles away. See, so we can go up and you know, see us clear as day, so colour our eyes or something. And then I'll disappear off to the vent or something. Now, obviously, our display areas, or well, I would be facing that way. And um, there's barn and everything. So, obviously, I can see quite clearly over here, and I can see him a little speck for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll lose sight of him, and, and all the audience lose sight of him. And stuff. So, you just like kind of wonder where he is. Everyone thinks he's flown off because it's quite apparent that he has. And you know, and then you get the law out. Now, you don't know, have a clue where he is. And you get the lure out. Now you can see it, you see it, you get the lure out. Now, a lot of folks just come straight back again, but not Samson. <laughs> Samson goes all the way around until he's on the other side of you, and he'll be about you know, a few miles that way. You know, and he'll get a big step. So he stood there for about 10 minutes, and then suddenly, while well, I'm still facing out this way, thinking he's out there, he'll come at 150 miles an hour and catch me out straight away. And then all this time, all he's been doing is gliding, using thermals and things. So he has all these amounts of energy and gets all of his food. See. But it's very clever, you see. He so thinks about how to get his food. Um, you know, it's very good because when you're doing displays, people always, you know, expect, you know, because they've seen this and this and this before, they expect the bird to come quite close and stuff. But they don't expect the bird to come 150 miles an hour between their heads and, you know, catch it off straight away. It just scares the willies out of him. Including me, because I ain't going to get a clue when he's going to come back. He'll come back when he's ready. So, it's a good laugh, really. Except it's terrible when you're trying to time the displays. You know, you've got 45, 40 minutes to fly four birds in. Got ten minutes, you know. Spend ten minutes swinging the ball, waiting for him to come back, and then you know he's, he does mess it up a little bit. We're just trying to get him to stick a bit closer. He 